everybody agree and say, our God is not dead. Our God is not dead. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. Is Lord. Is Lord. Over the Philippines. Over the Philippines. Over Asia. Purihin po ang Panginoon, isang mapagpalang araw sa lahat po ng mga sumusubaybay dito sa ating special uh, worship prayer healing service. At uh, ito po si Brother Eddie dito mismo sa New Prayer Garden Church dito sa 101 MacArthur Highway, Bunlo, Bukawe, Bulacan, Philippines. At uh, tayo po ngayon ay nasa live ng JILFB. At the same time, sa Light TV, God's Channel of Blessings. At uh, purihin po ang Panginoon, nakikita po tayo at naririnig, napapanood sa more than 60 countries of the world kung saan naroon ang mga JIL churches worldwide. Purihin ang Panginoon. Sa panahong pong ito na tayo ay niyayanig ng uh, worldwide uh, panic, chaos, anarchy, because of the uh, ongoing uh, novel corona virus disease ay uh, nilagay po ng Diyos sa aking puso ang uh, tinatawag kong God's message or messages in such a precarious season like this tatlo po ang mahalagang bagay na nilagay ng Diyos sa aking puso una understanding the absolute necessity of the blood of Jesus. Kailangan maunawaan po natin ang napakahalagang <clears throat> kapangyarihan ng banal na dugo ng Panginoong Yesus. Ano meron ng dugo ni Jesus? Na la, sa kasaysayan ng buong mundo'y higit kailanman ay kailang, kailangan po nating lahat. Para maunawaan po natin ang contextualized revelation ng kahalagahan ng banal at mga pangyarihan dugo ng Panginoong Yesus, reviewin po natin ang biblical historical uh, event tungkol sa Passover. Buksan po natin ang banal na kasulatan doon po sa Exodus chapter 12 regarding the Passover historic event. Nung panahon na dumating po ang judgment sa Egypto upang maligtas ang mga tao ng Diyos ay inutusan ng Diyos si Moses at ang buong Old Testament congregation ng Panginoon. At ang utos po niya ay kumuha ng dugo ng goat or sheep or calves na one year old at walang depekto. No defect. At yung dugong yon ay papahid sa mga hamba ng pintuan ng bawat bahay o tahanan ng mga anak ng Diyos. Makikita po natin dito sa banal na kasulatan, dito po sa uh, Exodus 12 verse, verse 5, para maintindihan natin, the animals you choose must be year old males without defect. Without, de without defect. And you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Makikita po natin ang kondisyon dito. Yung dugo ng sheep or goat ay kinakailang walang depekto. Yung klaseng dugong yon na sumisimbolo sa future holy blood of Jesus to be shed on the cross of Calvary, yung pong dugong yon ang ipahid sa mga hamba ng mga pintuan ng mga bahay ng mga anak ng Diyos nung panahon na yon. Kaya dito po yung makikita natin sa verse 12 ng Exodus 12. On the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all of the gods of Egypt. 
I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Historically, ito po ay uh, nangyari nung panahon ni Moses. Nang dumating ang judgment, isa sa mga judgment ng Panginoon ay bisitahin ng angel of death ang Egypto, pasukin ang mga bahay ng buong Egypto at patayin ang mga firstborn na tao at firstborn na animal. Ang tanging proteksyon na ibinigay ng Diyos sa kanyang mga tunay na anak ay makita yung dugo ng hayop, sheep or goat, without defect. Without defect. Binigyan ng, ng Diyos ang kahalagahan ng without defect doon sa blood. Malinis na dugo at ipahid sa hamba ng mga pintuan ng bahay. At doon magpapas over ang, ang, ang angel of death. At nakita po natin sa kasaysayan na matay lahat ang firstborn asan uh, ng mga tao nung panahon na yon sa Egypto. Ganon din ang mga firstborn na anak ng mga animals as one of the judgments ng Panginoon. At ang mga tunay na anak ng Diyos na sumunod, sumunod, who obeyed the uh, command of the Lord na nagpahid ng banal na dugo o dugo ng hayop symbolizing the future holy blood, pure blood, of the Lord Jesus Christ to be shed on the cross of Calvary, naligtas po sa tinatawag na destructive plague. Sa panahong ito na worldwide ang tinatawag na Nobel Coronavirus Disease. Lahat po ay nagpapanik, walang exemption. The entire earth is now suffering from worldwide panic. Nagkaroon ng shutdown ang mga kumpanya, business companies in almost all countries of the world. Mga giant airlines ay sarado. Lockdown ang maraming mga uh, bansa. First time in the history of the earth na nangyari itong worldwide panic, worldwide threat of food crisis. At makikita natin ang iba't ibang mga signs mga different signs na ipinakita ng Panginoon o sin- nireveal ng Panginoong Yesus doon sa Matthew chapter, uh, makikita natin doon sa Matthew chapter 28 ng tunangin ng Panginoon, ano-anong mga signs of the second coming and the end of this age. And the Lord enumerated in Matthew 24 the different signs of the second coming. Makikita natin yan sa, sa banal na kasulatan. Pwede bang basahin natin sandali? Ang Matthew 24 as a sort of review. Matthew 24. Let me read beginning uh, beginning uh, verse uh, uh, verse uh, I think two. So Matthew 24 or Matthew 24 beginning verse three. Beginning verse three. Everybody up to verse 14. Let us read. I'm reading from the new sa international, New International Version Bible. Everybody read. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of, of, the, end, of, and of the end of, the, of this age? Of the age. Verse 4, Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. Everybody read. You can see on the screen. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. For the last 100 years, nangyari na po yan sa history of the world. Many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. Until now, may nagsasabing siya ang tinatawag na appointed son of God. Makikita po natin, kalat na yan sa buong mundo. For the last 100 years, hallelujah. At makikita po natin, verse 6, please. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not 
alarm. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nangyari ang, sec- ang First World War, nangyari ang Second World War, at nakikita natin ang rumors of wars hanggang sa matapos ang Cold War. At ngayon, na-revive ang mga Cold War sa different countries of the world. Alam natin ang issue ng Iran, ng Iraq, ng Middle East countries, etc., etc. At nakita natin ang na-revive ang Cold War ng Russia, ng China, ng America, etc., etc. Lahat ng ito'y nangyari ng lahat. Verse 7, please. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Alam natin lahat ng nangyari lahat dyan. Ang Korea naghiwalay, South Korea, North Korea, Vietnam, South and North Vietnam, etc. Kingdoms against kingdoms, nation against nation, at yung er- famines and earthquakes, ang dami na pong nangyari. Nag- nagkaroon ng famines dahil nagkaroon ng tsunami, nagkaroon ng mga food shortages, ng mga Ebola uh, plagues, etc., Uh, earthquakes, uh, isa sa mga uh, signs of the second coming of the Lord ay ang, uh, ang uh, series of earthquakes. Naalala ko nung isang linggo yata o bago dumating si uh, Brother uh, uh, Stanley sa Iloilo, several earthquakes nangyari sa airport sila sa Bisaya. Several earthquakes preceded by several earthquakes sa Mindanao. Kaliwat kanan at sabi ng mga uh, authorities sa uh, sa volcanology, bawat segundo, bawat minuto, nagkakaroon ng earthquake sa buong mundo. So, lahat ng ito ay, ay, ay fulfilled already. In verse 8, uh, uh, please, all these are the beginning of birth pains. Then, 9, hallelujah, and you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. Verse 10, that At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Tingnan po ninyo, pag binasa ninyo, nabasa niyo mga libro katulad ng Tortured for Christ, many years ago, sa socialist and communist countries, pag nahulihan ka ng Bible, tortured ka, pinapatay ka, kinukulong ka, lahat po ng iyan ay nangyari ng lahat in history. At uh, many false prophets will appear and deceive many. Lahat po yung nangyari. Ano pa yung sinabi sa verse 12? Please, verse 12. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. The love of... Ano yun? Verse 12. Because of the increase of wickedness, nagkaroon ng worldwide uh, appearance of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Verse 13. Tapusin po natin hanggang verse 14. But the one who stands firm to the end will be... Say, verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Yung mga subsequent verses po, yun ang mga specifics na mangyayari pagdating ng subsequent events. At kung uh, in relation to this, naalala ko hong bigla, yung uh, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Let's read that revealing scriptures. Ano po ang sabi? But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, lovers of themselves, lovers of money, For the last hundred years, nangyari po yan, maging sa Christian dome. Many Christian leaders started right, but ended wrong. Alam po natin yan sa history. At uh, verse 3 ho, ang sabi roon, Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Ito po ang sabi ng Holy Spirit through St. Paul, Apostle Paul. Lahat pong ito ay nakita ng ating dalawang mata, nangyari for many, many years ago and until now. Exactly yung sinabi ng Holy Spirit through precious Holy Spirit through St. Paul in the last days. Kaya po, makikita natin na ready na, ready na ang buong mundo. 
ready na ang buong mundo sa tinatawag na appearance ni Antichrist. Ready na. Yung signs of the second coming, Matthew 24, at pag binasa natin ang Daniel, book of Daniel, pinag-aralan natin ang book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, tugman-tugma, plus Matthew chapter 24, at ang iba pang mga selected in a vital scriptures, makikita natin ang buong senaryo ng buong mundo. The earth is ready. Ready for the emergence of Antichrist, the Satan's incarnate. Ready to offer peace and hope sa, in the midst of the troubled world. Bago mangyari ito magkakaroon ng spirit of hopelessness, magkakaroon ng worldwide panic, magkakaroon ng sunod-sunod na mga calamities and disasters, famine, earthquakes, lahat na po ng signs na binigay sa second coming ni Lord Jesus ay nangyay- nangyari at nangyayari everyday. Itong nangyaring corona, Nobel Corona uh, virus uh, plague, worldwide po ito. Nakita nyo, mga gobyerno mismo, utterly helpless. Governments of the world where it are in confusion. Hindi malaman ang gagawin. Ang naisip, lockdown. <laughs> lockdown. Mga siyudad, mga bansa, lockdown. After paralysis of the entire economic activities. Kaya makikita po natin, first time in history na meron na ngayong world panic. Kaya makikita natin nila lay down ng, ng, ng historic events na ito ang, ang foundation for the appearance of a man who could be like Superman offering peace, offering hope, offering solutions to utter helplessness of all governments of the world. Kaya po napakahalaga ngayon dito na maintindihan natin yung understanding the absolute necessity of the power of the blood of Jesus. Because we are living in, this, in, in the midst of precarious season. We are living in this dangerous time. Only divine protection of the Creator, the living God, is the real hope of mankind. Kaya napakahalagang balik-balikan natin ang kahalagahan ng revelation truth sa Bible the awesome power of the holy blood of Jesus. Kung paano nagkaroon ng Passover noon at nagkaroon ng divine protection ng mga anak ng Diyos during the time of Moses, kailangan po natin ito ngayon, more than ever, ang divine protection of the awesome power of the holy blood of Jesus. Ano meron ng blood na ito ni Jesus? Bakit ito ngayon ang urgent need of humanity? Sapagat ang protection lang po, ang divine protection lang po ng Diyos, ang pag-asa nating lahat. Yang, yang, yang possible emergence ng right vaccine against this uh, uh, novel coronavirus disease, yan po'y papayagan ng Diyos yan eventually dahil napakarami hong nagpe-pray ngayon. Alam ko, alam nating lahat. Alam nating lahat more than ever before ang kahalagahan ng 2 Chronicles 7.14 and I quote, God said, If my people, not the people of the world, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. God said, I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land. Whether we like it or not, this uh, coronavirus disease is a plague now widespread all over the world that has created worldwide panic. Kaya makikita natin inihahanda na ng kasaysayan ng historic events ang sudden emergence of the so-called uh, Antichrist. Tatanggapin siya ng buong mundo sapagat the entire earth is in utter hopelessness. Mayroong world panic. Mayroong worldwide food crisis. Sarado ang mga pabrika, ang mga kumpanya. Lockdown ng maraming bansa. Halos lahat ng bansa ay mayroong lockdown scheme. Shutdown ng mga kumpanya, manufacturing plants, mga airlines, lahat. This has never been experienced before. 
This is the first time that there is a worldwide panic, worldwide calamities and disasters beyond measure. Dito nga sa Metro Manila, mayroong mga, may mga, nagsasa, may mga naurinigang mga tao na pag hindi natigil ito ay himahanda silang agawin, pasukin ang mga bahay-bahay at mga agaw ng pagkain. This is a very precarious, dangerous time. The people of the world, especially the people of God, should understand, hallelujah, the absolute necessity of the power of blood of Jesus. Kung papaanong during the Passover historic event, during Moses' time, naligtas sa mga anak ng Diyos, kailangan po natin to invoke and to apply literally the awesome power of the holy blood of Jesus Christ. Purihin natin ang Panginoon. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Tayong mga binili ng banal na dugo ng Panginoong Yesus, tayong mga tumanggap ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng banal na dugo ng Panginoong Yesus, while the world is in panic, tayo pong nakakaunawa ng grand plan of God for the ages. We have to intensify our prayer life. We have to recommit our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Sabagkat ito pong mga senyalis na ito ay maraming revelation. Bago mag-emerge, bago mag-emerge ang Antichrist regime, meron pong mangyayari. Pero bago po yan, gusto ko lang humbigyan din ang kahalagahan ng banal na dugo ng Panginoong Yesus. Ang dugo ng Panginoong Yesus ay ang kaisa-isang dugo sa langit at sa lupa na may kapangyarihang maglinis at maghugas, mag-alis ng kapangyarihan at kaparusahan ng kasalanan. Makikita po natin sa banal na kasulatan doon po sa Doon po sa Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Tingnan po natin yung Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. In Him, everybody read NIV version. In Him, we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Redemption through His blood. There is no any other way of redemption except through the blood of Jesus. Because nandun sa dugo ni Jesus ang forgiveness of sins in accordance to the amazing grace, the riches of His, of His grace. Doon po sa uh, 1 John 1.7, tingnan po natin ang 1 John 1.7, just to mention a few among many scriptures, emphasizing the revealed truth regarding the awesome power and necessity of the holy blood of Jesus. In verse 7, everybody read, But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Tingnan po natin ang Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Ano po sabi ron? Since we have now been justified... By His blood. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? Ang liwanag po ng revelation. It is through the holy blood of Jesus we can be justified. And once we are justified, we shall be saved from God's wrath. Hallelujah. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Kung maintindihan po natin ang katotohanan ito, napakaliwanag pa sa sikat ng araw. In times of disasters, calamities, in, in such a time as this that we are now in precarious, precarious season, the great agent need is to avail ourselves of the awesome power of the holy blood of Jesus. Tanong ng iba, bakit yung dugo lang ni Jesus ang one and only blood in heaven and in earth? Naalala niyo ba yung binigyan din ko kangina sa Passover? The blood of the sheep or the goat must be without defect. Tandaan natin, the blood of Jesus Christ is the one and only blood without any stain of sin. Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, 
who has made sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus Christ who knew no sin was made sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 uh, please. <clears throat> God made him, the Lord Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in Him. Bakit, anong meron, anong kakaiba ang dugo ni Jesus? Marami rin napako sa krus during uh, those times. Pero isa lang ang napako, crucified at namatay at nagtigis ng kanyang banal na dugo na dumaloy sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Isa lang, yun lang dugo ni Jesus. Ano meron ng dugo ni Jesus? Yung dugo niya is the one and only sacred blood in heaven and in earth. In the entire history of humanity. Why? Ang dahilan po yung nakalagay doon sa Isaiah chapter 14. Chapter 14 beyond. Verse 7. Verse 7. Chapter 7 verse 14. Isaiah 7 verse 14. Tingnan po natin. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. 700 years before the actual birth of the begotten son, the Lord Jesus here on earth, prophet Isaiah already prophesied. A virgin will, give, will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Tingnan po natin, 700 years after ng prophecy, sa Matthew chapter 1, beginning verse 18. Let us just review this. This is so important to be known and to be heard by the entire world today. In such a time as this, so that we can understand the necessity of the power of the Holy Blood of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Kalangahon ni Joseph ay nasa lisensya ng ibang lalaki, kaya nag-iisip siyang hiwalayan o i-divorsyo si, si Mary. Ano po ang sabi ng verse 19? Hallelujah! Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Remember, at the time, the, the part of the culture at the time, kapag isang dalaga, na wala pang asay, biglang na, nagdalang tao, ay binabato ng taumbayin sa plaza hanggang sa mamatay. Mabait si Joseph. Marahil talaga napamahal sa kanya si Blessed Mary at ay niyang bigyan ng disgrace sa public. Kaya dahan-dahan niyang hiwala yan. Pero may ginawa ang Diyos. God sent Angel Gabriel, verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Hindi ka nasa lisihan ng ibang lalaki, Joseph. Ang nasa kanyang sinabupunan ay bugtong na anak ng Diyos na magkakatawang tao. Kaya tanggapin mo si Mary as wife. Bigyan mo siya ng karangalan at dangal sa mata ng lipunan. Verse 21, She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Verse 22, Hallelujah. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. Verse 23 ng Matthew chapter 1, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. What do you mean by Emmanuel? Here in, in the New Testament of Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is an overwhelming evidence that Jesus Christ is the God incarnate. While Satan is the God, it, it, while the Antichrist is Satan's incarnate, Jesus Christ, Hallelujah, is the God incarnate. At sabi ng verse twenty-four, ano sabi sa verse twenty-four? Matthew one. When Joseph woke up and he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. And verse twenty-five, ano pong sabi? But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and gave him the name Jesus. Isang mahalagang katuroan po ito 
sa verse 25 ng Matthew chapter 20 chapter 1 hindi ginalaw ni bless ni, ni Joseph si Mary as his wife walang sexual activity silang mag-asawa Tinang, tinangkilik niya si Maria as wife but no touch hanggang may panganak si Jesus that's why the blood of Jesus is the pure blood of the living God not the blood from Adam and Eve therefore exempted from original sin that's why he is the only mediator between God and man 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 he is the only name given under heaven that man can be saved Acts chapter 4 verse 12 he is the only lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world John chapter 1 verse 29 as John the Baptist said and no less than Jesus Christ said I am the way the truth and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me. Makikita natin sa Matthew 13, basahin natin mula verse 54 hanggang sa huli. Dahil sa obedience ni Blessed Mary at ni Joseph, natuwa ang Diyos sa kanila, they were blessed. Binigyan sila ng mga anak na jewels of their lives. Mababasa niyo rin ang pangalan ng apat na anak na lalaki ni Joseph at ni Blessed Mary. Nagnabuhay silang normal. Binless sila ng Panginoon because of their obedience in cooperating with God's grand plan for the incarnation of the begotten Son of the living God. Napakahalaga po ng banal na dugo ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Ano ang sabi doon sa Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 concerning the blood of Jesus? Everybody read Revelation 12, verse 11. They triumph over Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Nakita roon, they overcame, they overcame Him. Yes, the works of the devil, the people of God can overcome all the works of the devil by the blood, by the holy blood of Jesus and by the word of their testimony. Doon po sa Romans Doon po sa Romans chapter, Romans 3, verse 24, verse 25. Romans 3, tingnan po natin sandali ito. Just to emphasize to you, the necessity, understanding the necessity, the absolute necessity of the holy blood of Jesus. Yes, everybody read, and, and all are justified freely. All are justified pretty by His grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Verse 25, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His, of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate His righteousness because in His forbearance He had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Nakikita po natin dito talagang the holy blood shed by the Lord Jesus Christ as, as His sacrifice. Dito po nakapasok ang tinatawag na righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Kayo at ako na ipinanganak sa kasalanan, tayong lahat na nasa ilalim ng sumpa ng kasalanan, tandaan ninyo, all plagues, famines, all this, uh, these are curses of sins. But the Lord Jesus Christ was made as a curse. He, he, he was made as a curse so that He can redeem you and me from the curses of sins, from the curses of the law. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and verse 14. Kaya napakahalaga po ang blood ni Jesus. At itong blood covering ni Jesus ang, ang, ang tanging makapagtatakip makapagbibigay ng divine protection sa ating lahat. In the midst of this widespread uh, widespread uh, contagious disease, the so-called uh, corona, corona uh, virus uh, disease, ang number one pong protection natin dito is by invoking and claiming and proclaiming that we are redeemed by the holy, holy blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed in Calvary. That the blood covering of Jesus is upon you and me, upon all our loved ones, our family. Proclaim it. 
Kaya mahalaga nga, merong, may nakalagay na declaration sa pintuan ng bahay ng mga anak ng Diyos, This house is covered tightly with the holy blood of Jesus. Hindi makapapasok ng plague of death. Praise God. And of course, we have to exercise wisdom. For without wisdom, even you are anointed, without wisdom, you can be destroyed. Kaya napakahalaga ho ang prayer nating Lord, give me wisdom in our daily living. Napakahalaga ang wisdom. At ang simula ng wisdom, alam ninyo, ang Romans chapter 9, verse 10, Fear of the Lord, fear of God, is the beginning of wisdom. Kaya, ito pong uh, unang nilagay na, na message ng Diyos sa puso ko, napakahalang ikalat natin sa buong mundo, lalo na sa mga tunay na anak ng Diyos. Yung mga nagsuko ng buhay kay Jesus, yung mga nag-acknowledge ng supreme sacrifices of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, He knew no sin but was made sin for us so that we can be made as righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He knew no sickness, but was made sick. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. He bore our sorrows. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon Him. And by His stripes, by His wounds, we are healed. Hindi lang yun. Sa curse of poverty, part of the atonement provided by the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, He was so rich, yet became so poor, so that through His poverty we can be rich. In the Bible, Makikita niyo, I just got no time to, 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 to search it. In times of famine, meron pa nga ko ang Panginoon. His own people, His faithful, obedient people will enjoy plenty in times of famine. Kaya tayong mga tunay na binili ng dugo ni Jesus, just continue to be faithful, continue to be obedient, continue to commit our daily life to Him and to Him alone. In times of crisis, you and I, all the purchased souls by the holy blood of Jesus are destined to be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves you. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Yes, you and I, hallelujah, more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us. In Romans 8, 31, if God is with you and for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Let's avail ourselves of the holy blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. At uh, mangyayari po sa atin yung Hebrews 9.22, Without the shedding of the blood, there can be no remission of sins. And because our sins were remitted because of the holy blood of Jesus, yung judgment sa sins ay removed already because of the awesome power of the blood of Jesus if we truly surrender our life to Jesus Christ, acknowledge His supreme sacrifices on the cross of Calvary, He succeeded in providing for you and me complete atonement, complete atonement, giving you and me, hallelujah, a spiritual salvation, physical salvation, deliverance, even from the curse of poverty, in the midst of famine, you and I can enjoy plenty, but we have to really seek the Lord. Yung basic command ng Panginoon, Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. At maranasan natin yung sinabi ng Panginoon doon sa 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God has given you not the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Once we remain faithful to the Lord, hallelujah, the entire world will suffer, will become worse and worse. Naalala ko nung, during the prime years of Dr. Billy Graham, I was just new in the Lord. Narinig ko isa sa mga messages niya, in the last days, the world will become worse and worse. But the people of God, the genuine people of God, will be, will be, greater and greater and greater in glory of the Lord. Kaya napakahalaga po na tayong mga tunay na tinubos ng banal at makapangyarang dugo ng Panginoong Yesus manatiling matapat. Pursuant to the commandments of God, pursuant to the Word of God, pursuant to the will of God revealed in His Word. Hallelujah. Amen? 
Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ang pangalawa pong message ng Panginoon na nilagay sa puso ko in the midst of this uh, uh, corona uh, virus uh, disease, the so-called worldwide panic na nangyayari ngayon. Number two, ho, the second important message of the Lord put He put in my heart. Recognizing the writings on the wall. Yung una po, understanding the absolute necessity of the power of the blood of Jesus. Ang pangalawa, recognizing the writings on the wall. Recognizing the signs of the second coming enumerated by the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 24. Correlated ito sa Revelation sa book of Daniel and book of Revelation. I have no, of course, time to, to, uh, to conduct various seminars on this matter. Have a hunger to study. Be hungry in studying eschatology or the study of the last things. Pero sa puntong ito, gusto kong reviewin natin sandali o i-remind natin natin mga sarili Recognizing the writings on the wall. Nakita natin yung signs of the second coming na binasa natin kanina sa Matthew 24. Makikita natin ang iba't ibang mga signs, ang wars and rumors of wars, famine, ang mga emergence ng false prophets, ang uh, earthquakes, uh, lahat na ng mga uh, wickedness, widespread wickedness. Lately nga, Nabasa natin, di ba, sa Florida, in the midst of coronavirus uh, uh, plague, nagkaroon ng napakalaking gay festival at mga nude pa ang mga taong nandun, walang magawa ang mga pulis. At ngayon, sila ngayon ay tinamaan ng, ng ganitong uh, coronavirus at kinu-question nilang gobyerno uh, anong may tutulong sa kanila, ay eh, sila ang gumawa ng kanilang self-destruction. Ang liwaliwanag sa banal na kasulatan in the last days, ang sexual immorality, ang homosexual offenders, same-sex marriage. Imagine rebelling against God's uh, uh, nature. Ang killing unborn children, rampant ang abortion. Ang worldwide wickedness, overwhelming nating nakikita sa buong mundo. Talagang the world is becoming worse and worse. Praise God for the genuine body of Christ who remain faithful unto the end will become better and better until until that great day, until the rapture of the church. Amen? Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hinug na hinug na po ang mundo sa sudden emergence of the very person of Antichrist. Dahil the world is now engulfed with widespread crisis, food shortage, grinding poverty, worldwide widespread of corruption, wickedness, lahat na ng uri ng kasamaan ay nakikita natin sa buong mundo. Incest, sexual immorality, rape, Killings, murdering in the name of the law. Lahat na ng, ng hindi ka panipaniwalang pangyayari mga 50 years ago ay ngayon nangyayari sa buong mundo. Kaya it is the height of recklessness. It is the height of negligence. If not the height of insanity, if we do not, hallelujah, recognize the writings on the wall. If we do not recognize the validity of the signs of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya nga, ang maraming preachers ngayon na tumanggap ng revelation sa Panginoon, the real message today is not gospel prosperity. The real message today is prepare for eternity. The real message today is prepare for the second coming of Jesus. Prepare 
for the rapture because the second coming of Jesus will be preceded by the rapture. And the second coming of Jesus is to be preceded by the seven years' great tribulations. Kaya ho, we must be ready. Purihin ang Panginoon. Alam natin na magkakaroon ng worldwide panic. Worldwide panic because of worldwide famine, disasters, calamities, food shortages, talagang uh, lahat ng crisis, and worldwide wickedness. Even inside and outside the church, in the secular world especially. Doon ho, papa, darating ngayon ang tinatawag na emergence of Antichrist. Tatanggapin siya ng mga tao. Dahil the world is suffering from utter hopelessness. And this man will offer hope, will offer peace, will offer solutions to the worldwide panic. Pero, yun hong pagtanggap sa kanya, magsisimula ang seven years great tribulations. Pag binasa niyo ang book of Daniel, a revelation, especially doon sa, sa chapter 13, chapter 14, yung huling, yung huling, yung huling salita po doon sa Revelation 13, magkakaroon ng mark of the beast, panahon ng tribulation, mark of the beast. Anong, anong, uh, tingnan nga natin yung huling chapter, ng Revelation, para lang uh, maliwanag na yung Revelation dito, makita ng mga tao na hindi nagbibiro ang Diyos. Ano po ang sabi rito? Sa verse 17 po and verse 18 ng Revelation 13, just a, uh, a glimpse of what will happen upon the emergence of Antichrist. Revelation 13, verse 17 and verse 18. Everybody read. So that they could not buy or sell unless they had a mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. Yang beast po na yan, referring to Antichrist. Verse 18. So this calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man that number is 666. Kung, maki, maki, kung tayo po'y aware sa empirical evidences of what is happening now, in line with the revelation truth from the Holy Bible of the living God, ready-ready ng mundo sa sudden appearance ni Antichrist. Ready ng mundo in laying down the foundation for the seven years great tribulation, pitong taong dakilang kapigatian. Panginang umaga, sabi ng aking Panganay na anak, si Joel, well, John John, eh ba't tinawag na dakilang kapigatian? Ang sabi ko po eh, marami na tayong naranasang kapigatian sa kasaysayan ng buong mundo. Pero itong seven years great tribulation ay sukdulang kapigatian. Gusto nang mamatay ng mga tao. Sabi nga nung anak kong pastora, eh, Delisha Kangina, sabi sa kuya niya, gustuhin mong mamatay ng mga tao ay eh, hindi mamatay-matay. Pag ikay na markahan na ng marka ni Antichrist, you are forever mortgaged to hell, to the lake of fire. Kaya ang price of salvation at the time is too high. You have to fight the Antichrist to the extent that your head will be beheaded, that you will be beheaded. Yun ang price. Kaya maraming, ma, marami ring mga Kristiyanong naiwan sa rapture. And because they have knowledge prior to the rapture, but they fail to comply with the requirements of a glorious church, a radiant church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. Hindi sila nasama sa rapture, pero alam nila, and they know the Antichrist, they know the mark of the beast, and they will fight. Some of them will fight to be beheaded because that is the last recourse para makahabol sa langit. Ito po'y dapat nating maunawaan at maintindihan. Sabi ng iba, nakakatakot naman yung message na yan. Truth should be revealed. Because without knowledge of truth, it is more dangerous for us to live every day without the knowledge of truth. Hosea 4.6, God said, My people are being destroyed, perishing for lack of knowledge. 
And Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 31, verse 32, If you continue in my word, indeed you are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Pero yung word of God, without being applied in our daily life, is useless. Yes, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, Continue in my word, continue in my law, day and night, or in my word, day and night, so that, so that you can observe to do the things written therein. If you do that, if you do that, anything you do, you will prosper and you will have great success. Obedience to God's will revealed in the word of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, paraphrasing. Kaya mga minamahal, in the midst of this, uh, as we live in these precarious times, dangerous times, let's go back to the prescriptions of our Lord God Almighty. Napakahalaga na tayo po ay ready. Pangatlo, pang- last but not least, na major urgent message ng Diyos na nilagay sa puso ko, prepare for your eternity. Prepare for your eternity. Ang una, ulitin ko, understanding the absolute necessity of the power of the blood of Jesus. Mangyayari sa atin yung benefits ng Passover sa Exodus chapter 20. Mas mahalaga pa dahil yun ay dugo ng hayop. Ito naman ay actual na dugo ni Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Not only covering up our, blo- our sins, but remitting the sins. Washing away. Erasing the sins. Hallelujah. At pangalaway, recognizing the writings on the wall. Let us be repressed of the se- several signs of the second coming of Jesus. At ulitin ko po, Bago magkaroon ng second coming ni Jesus, kailangang magkaroon muna ng emergence ang Antichrist. At bago magkaroon ng emergence ang Antichrist, magkakaroon muna ng rapture. Ito po ang tinatawag na stages in the grand plan of God for the ages. Mauna muna, ang tinatawag na rapture of the church. Yung nakalagay sa 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to verse 18. Let us read that, those scriptures. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 up to verse 18. Makikita natin dito ang rapture of the church. Glory be to God leading to seven years merrymaking in heaven. At the same time, what is happening in the entire earth is seven years great tribulations under the reign of Antichrist. Everybody read. First, uh, uh, Thess- First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 up to verse 18. NIV version. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed. Say ibang translation, ignorant about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope, who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. Yung those who have fallen asleep in Him, yun ang mga unang mga namatay na may faith, may pananampalatayang tunay kay Jesus ng kanilang spirit and soul ngayon ay nandun sa langit, without glorified body yet, spirit and soul. Yung sinasabi sa 2 Corinthians 5, 8, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And once we are present in the Lord, ang conclusion nga ni St. Paul, ni Apostle Paul sa Philippians 1, 21, for me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain or profitable. To die is gain or profitable. Ngayon, pagyating nitong tinatawag na ito na rapture, we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. Verse 15, According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, kayo at ako na buhay pa, at hindi pa namamatay physically. 
According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, left behind, or who are left until the coming of the Lord, yung buhay pa, hindi pa namamatay, ibig sabihin, will certainly not proceed. Will certainly not proceed. Hindi maunahan those who have fallen asleep. Yung mga, those who have fallen asleep, yung mga namatay kay Kristo, Jesus, sa pananampalataya, silang mauna. Verse 16, For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven <clears throat> mula sa throne ng langit where Jesus is ascended unto the right hand of God the Father who is a spirit and Jesus with His glorified body since He was resurrected from the dead. And 40 days after his, of His resurrection, He ascended unto the right hand of the Father. From that throne, Jesus Christ will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Hallelujah! The dead in Christ will rise first. Yung mga unang-unang panahon pa hanggang ngayon na hindi pa inaabutan ng rapture ay biglang magkakaroon ng resurrection with glorified body. How, how, how could that be, Brother Eddie? That is the mystery of the infinite, awesome, sovereign power of the living God. Yung soul and spirit sa langit, kapiling ng presensya ng Panginoon, suddenly, ang kayang intindihin ng tao ay yung, yung kanyang uh, katawang panlupa na bumalik sa dust, ay biglang, yun ang, yun ay biglang-biglang, yun ang raw materials according to Foundation of Pentecostal uh, Theology. Yun ang biglang-biglang maging raw material ng glorified body that will meet the Lord in the air. We cannot fathom really the infinite wisdom of the living God. But this is revealed reasonably in the Holy Scripture. Like this, for the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Verse 17. <coughs> After that, we who are still alive are left. We who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will be with the Lord forever. Listen carefully, please, beloved. Pagbabang pagbaba ng Panginoong Jesus mula sa langit, sa trono ng langit, hindi siya bababa sa lupa muna, sa clouds. Ito ang tinatawag na meet grand reunion in the air. We who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Grand reunion in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Ano po ang substance nitong revelation na ito? Ang unang-unang mag-meet kay Jesus sa air, sa clouds, yung grand reunion in the air, yung unang mga namatay na mga anak ng Diyos. Kasama na rin ang aking mga magulang, of course, ang aking tatlong kapatid, and lately, of course, ang mahal na mahal nating Sister Dory, kasama ron sa meeting in the clouds. At tayo naman ho, in the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, daig pa natin ang nasa pinakamabilis na elevator, swing! Kasunod tayo doon sa clouds, meeting in the air. So we'll be with the Lord forever. Muli nating mayayakap, makikita natin, of course, personal si Lord Jesus, face to face. Mayayakap natin ating mga mahal sa buhay ng unang mga panahon ay nauna ng umuwi. And we will be, ang sabi rito, we will be, the Lord Jesus will bring us to the third heaven. If you study carefully the, the entire eschatology, the study of the last things, we will having we will be having seven years of merrymaking in effect, paraphrasing. The first three hundred three three and a half years will be the so-called judgment seat of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter five verse ten, and in other parts of the Revelation book, 
magkakaroon ng tinatawag na rewards, accounting sa mga anak ng Diyos. Sa judgment seat of Christ, three and a half years. And then, the next three and a half years, the marriage supper of the Lamb, ikakasalang groom sa genuine church, sa glorious church, sa religious church, the church which was raptured without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. In other words, para praising seven years, nagme-merry making ang mga tunay na anak ng Diyos sa langit, yung naging matapat, naging obedient, yung mga nagmahal at naglingkod sa Diyos ng buong katapatan, matapos silang maborn again, hindi nagtaksil sa Diyos. At yun namang pong mga sa lupa naman, nagsisimula ang seven years great tribulations under the regime of Antichrist. More or less ho, magkasabay ho yan. Seven years, merry making sa langit, ang mga tagalangit, ang purchased by the blood of Jesus, at yung mga naiwan dito sa lupa, they will suffer the so-called great tribulations. Pagkatapos ho ng, ng great tribulations, ang sabi ho, doon magkakaroon ng actual advent, actual second advent, or actual second coming ni Lord Jesus. Bababaho siya sa lupa. Establish niya ang millennial reign. The global government all over the world ng world president ay si Jesus. Ang seat of power niya ay nasa Jerusalem. Kaya ho, ito ang dapat natin paghandaan. Sapagat sabi nga ng ilang mga preachers ngayon na narinig ko na merong talagang uh, full grasp of the agenda of God in the last days. The message of God today is, the number one message is, prepare for your eternity. Prepare for your eternity. Sapagkat ang mundo'y handang-handa at hinug na hinug na sa fulfillment ng appearance ni Antichrist. But before that, magkakaroon ng rapture of the church. Yung binasa natin kangina na caught up in the air. Sabi ng ibang mga medyo may konting philosophical mind, eh bakit wala ang salitang rapture sa Bible? Pag binasa ninyo yung caught up together, will be caught up together. The word caught up is the translation of the word rapture in the original word. Kaya wala nga yung rapture, pero yung caught up together is actually the rapture of the glorious church. Hallelujah. Kaya yan po ay part of the grand plan of God for the ages. At sa Bible, kapag tayo hindi nasama sa rapture, babaksak tayo sa kamay ni Antikristo. At hindi tayo makabibili ng pagkain sa mga mall, hindi tayo makakasakay sa mga sasakyan o transportation system unless we have the mark of the beast. At pag meron ka ng mark of the beast, forever mortgage ka as slaves of Satan. Para ka makahabol, you have to fight the Antichrist. Ang, ang cost nun, to be beheaded. Too precious ang, 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 ang price ng salvation sa seven years great tribulations. Pero ngayon, ang salvation ay free. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9. For by grace you are saved through faith. It is not of yourselves, it is God's gift. It is not of your works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9. Sa biyaya kayo nangaligtas sa magitan ng pananampalataya. Ito hindi dahil sa inyong sarili. Ito'y kaloob ng Diyos, regalo ng Diyos ng walang bayad. Hindi dahil sa inyong mga gawa upang ang sino man ay huwag magmapuri. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9. Sa Titus chapter 3, verse 5, not of your good works that you can be saved. It is through the grace of God manifested through the renewal of your spirit, regeneration of your spirit, in other words, through born-again experience. As Jesus said in John 3, 3, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We can only be born again, not necessarily transferring from one religion to another. Religion could be good, but religion has no power to save. If you study carefully the Bible, hell today is, is, is filled with all kinds of people from different kinds of religion. Ang importante sa Diyos as far as salvation is concerned is not religion, but relation. 
relationship with the living God to the saving knowledge of Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 3. John chapter 1 verse 14. But as many as received Jesus, to them, to them gave He the right to become children of God, even to those who believe it in His name. John chapter 1 verse 12. Ito lang ang paraan para maging immigrant of heaven tayo. Bibigyan tayo ng right to become children of God once we believe and receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord and as our God. Who is this Jesus again? John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The Word was God. In verse 3, nothing can be created without Him and for Him and by Him though everything was created. This Word, who was God, is the co-creator of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit in the series of creations before. And this Word, who was God, became flesh. Became flesh. He became man. And we have seen His glory as the only begotten Son of God the Father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1, verse 14. Kaya ang tumatanggap sa Kanya, Anong sabi ng 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, verse 12, even up to verse 13? This is the testimony that God has given you eternal life. And this life is in His Son, not in any religion, not in any person. Eternal life is in the begotten Son of God. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. And this is being written so that you will know that you have eternal life in the begotten Son of the living God so that you might believe on His name. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 up to verse 13. Yeah, mga minamahal, if you want to be wise in living in the last days, you have, to be, you have to ensure your eternity. Prepare for eternity. As Jesus said, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his own soul to hell forever? You may be the richest. You may be the most popular. You may gain fame, glory, power, money, wealth, riches. All those things are trash as far as eternity is concerned. Kaya, let us be wise. Let's prepare ourselves. Prepare for eternity. God is knocking at the door of our, of our heart. Revelation, I think, 2.20. Pakinggan natin ang Revelation 2.20 before I close in prayer. Hallelujah. Everybody read. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock the door of our heart. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. And they with me. Kayong sumusubaybay sa programang ito, sa wide sa live stream, sa Facebook, sa, sa television, program ng Jesus, ng, ng Light TV, God's Channel Blessings, the Lord is knocking at the door of your heart. Maaring na-dedicate na, na, you na ang inyong, ang inyong buhay kay Lord. Na-dedicate you na. Pero this time, to be sure, na kasama tayo sa rapture, let us renew our commitment to the Lord. Let us rededicate our life to Jesus. Yung mga hindi pa totohanang nag nag-surrender ng buhay kay Jesus, I'm giving you the chance to receive Jesus now. Sabi ng Panginoon, sino man ang lumalapit sa akin sa anumang para na hindi ko itataboy, John 6.37, anyone who comes to me, in no way will I cast him out. Sinabi niya sa Matthew 11.28, Any, anyone of you who labor, who is heavily laden, heavily burdened, come to me, come to me, and I will give you rest. Sino man sa inyo na bibigat ang lubha, sino man ang may pasan ng mga gabundok na problema, lumapit lamang kay sa akin, sabi ni Jesus, bibigyan ko kayo ng kapahingan. Remember, Christ is the answer to all our needs. Yung mukha tayong lahat sandali, itaas natin ang ating kamay, symbolizing that we are surrendering our life to Jesus, or resurrendering or rededicating our life to Jesus, and follow me with a simple prayer. Remember this, God is not limited by distance, space, and even time. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus said, if there are two on earth agreeing and touching a particular thing, it shall be done by the Father in heaven. Matthew 18, verse 19. And even He said in verse 20 of Matthew 11, of Matthew 18, verse 20, if there are two or three gathering together in my name, I am in their midst. You and I, with Jesus, the Lord is with us. Hallelujah. Follow me with this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you. You are the begotten Son of the living God who became man. You are the God incarnate. You died on the cross of Calvary 
shedding your holy blood, your blood without sin, because of your virgin birth. I believe in my heart. You died for all my sins. You rose up from the dead for my justification. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. Forgive me for all my sins, inherited and committed sins, including the sins of omissions. Cleanse me with your holy, holy blood shed on the cross of Calvary. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Deliverer. Be my Healer. Be my Provider. And be my Lord and my God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill me with your holiness, with your righteousness. Help me to be ready to meet you in the air. Include me, Lord, in the rapture of the glorious church, of the radiant church, the church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Thank you, Lord. I believe, I receive your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name. Purihin po ang Panginoon, and I believe in my heart, kung dumating ang rapture of the church tonight, tomorrow, anytime, nobody knows the date because God said no one knows the date. Jesus said no one knows the date, the day and the time except the Father in heaven. Kaya, whether regardless of our doctrine on tribulations, whether pre mid pre 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 uh, trib or mid trib or post trib the best thing is be ready anytime be ready whatever it is may kanya kanya po tayong choice pero our choices are nothing to the schedule of god ang dios ang final say say schedule for your thing ng grand plan of the ages again let us pray for this uh Epidemic for this plague of uh, coronavirus. Remember, remember this, my beloved. The, sec the, the word of God in Second Chronicles seven fourteen is very important. In the midst of plague, in the midst of worldwide panic, worldwide famine, worldwide calamities, disasters, worldwide multi crisis engulfing the entire earth today we need god more than ever before we need the healing power of god we need the intervention of god yes the the solution to this uh, coronavirus disease the solution is only in the hands of god and can be rebuilt to the concerned scientists can be rebuilt to the health care uh, authorities all over the world but the source the main source of healing the main, the main source of deliverance is the very hand of Jesus Christ. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive your sins, and I will hear your land. Lord, we agree for you, Lord, appealing to you to intervene mightily. Let there be a divine intervention in all nations of the earth. Stop now this plague. By the power of the holy blood of Jesus, we rebuke and cancel this noble coronavirus disease all over the world. We cancel them by the holy blood of Jesus. We rebuke them in Jesus' mighty name. And we claim your word in Isaiah 10, 27. By the anointing oil, by the anointing oil, referring to the anointing power of the Holy Spirit, the yoke of the devil shall be destroyed. The works and the wires of the devil shall be destroyed. The plague, worldwide plague now, shall be destroyed in Jesus' mighty holy name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in Jesus' name, heal our land. Heal our land. Make a miracle for the entire human race to go back to you. Enlighten the people all over the world. 
Release the enlightenment, the spirit of enlightenment, conviction and repentance, Lord, that there be a genuine repentance of the entire human race all over the world. At Panginoon, maranasan ang lahat ang healing power of the living God. Salamat po, Panginoon. Let there be a worldwide evangelization and worldwide transformation of nations of the world before immediately give everybody a chance to be saved before it's too late. Salamat, Panginoon. We believe you have honored and answered our prayers. We praise you. We give back to you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say, Amen. Amen. Palakbakan po natin ng Panginoon. Hallelujah! Isa hong mahalagang mensahe, isa hong mahalagang announcement, magkakaroon po tayo, inikunyakunubida po natin ang lahat ng mga nagmamahal sa Diyos, nagmamahal sa bayan, magkakaroon po ng National Day of Prayer and Fasting on March 29, March 29, 2020, Sunday. Hanggang sa muli, ito po ang inyong lingkod, Brother Eddie Villanueva. Glory to God. At patuloy tayong maglingkod at magmahal sa Diyos ng may katapatan so that God will be pleased of our lives. When God is pleased of your life, He will lead you to that land filled with milk and honey to your promised land. Numbers 14 verse 8. Amen? To God be the glory. God bless the Philippines. God bless Israel. God bless all nations of the earth before it's too late. Hallelujah. And to God be the glory. Amen. Amen.